Hey, it's been really cold. I'm back at Oak Tree National. I'm going to head back to the course and play. Haven't played a lot of golf, and this is what I call knocking the rust off. I'll be a bit rusty today, so let's head to the course. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're going to play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're going to go out there and play great because of the single point swing. So one of the things that I know that I have to do when I haven't played in a while, and it's been, gosh, it's been a few months, and I really haven't hit a lot of golf balls. I've been super busy with the business. So I know in my golf swing, if I, put a, if I recorded my swing on video right now, it's going to look pretty good. That doesn't mean I always hit it really good right away because golf is a timing thing. And so what you need to do as is, is you warm up is the goal of a warm up to me isn't really, especially if I haven't played in a while, the goal is not really to come out here and try to hit drivers and hit it really good. Of course, I'm going to hit some drivers because I'm getting ready to go play. But the goal here really is to get my timing back. So think about it from a, a warm up standpoint and think about it from a get your timing back. Now, what is timing? I got that. So, so hang on. It's, it's windy today. So timing, and I'm going to use this training aid, so that was telling me to go grab that. So timing is really a uh, technique, but it's also making sure you're positioned correctly. When my timing is off, and I'll, I'll just give you an example, when my timing is off, I have too much movement in one part of my body. Maybe my foot's lifting up, I'm getting in front of it, or something like that. So timing can sometimes just be a fact that your, your mechanics have, have gotten a little off, or you're tight, you know, your body's tight. So the first thing I always do is, I love this training aid that we have. It's just, it's the swing thing. And, and basically this just helps me feel the golf swing without having to swing a golf club. So to me, sometimes a, a golf club just feels like a two by four. So this thing has a chain on the end of it. And I like just to warm up a little bit with this and just get a feeling back of the timing of how my body is. And this thing helps you because it's helping feel the release and feel lag. And that's one of the things that your, your, your hands, your wrists need to feel because as you're moving, this is where the timing gets off. If your body's out of position, you don't know where to release it. So I have to get a feel back just in the timing and the release. So this is, I'll warm up with this thing for a little while and I'll kind of, I'll kind of use that in between as I get into some hitting some shots. Now, I always want you to start small too because everybody wants to grab that driver and start hitting the driver. What I really want you to do is just grab a wedge. And I'm going to give you a little, little tip in my kind of secret to how I warm up. I start small and I start narrow. In other words, I'm hitting, I'm hitting long chip shots here, so I narrow my stance pretty good. I just choke down on the club and I hit easy shots. And just, it's really, like I said a second ago, it's just how do I get the timing back how do I get the timing back in my motion? So how do I just kind of get the feel for the little shots? And I'll sit here and hit little wedge shots until I get a little feel for it. I, I, I'll have to spend some time with the short club and just getting a feel back. And I, you know, it's okay if you want to sit here and hit wedges and then pull a couple drivers out and then go to the range. That's not a perfect warm up, but it's better to get your timing back than it is anything else. I mean, sitting out here hitting, you know, three woods or five irons or something, if, you're not, if your timing isn't good, isn't going to help you very much. The other thing that gets off on me sometimes if I haven't played in a while is ball position. So. I'm going to throw this down just for a second. I'm going to grab a nine iron this time, still a short club, and just check, check ball position a little bit. If you don't know what this is, and by the way, a lot of people ask me to do this. I'll put a link to that training aid and this training aid in the, in the description below. If you guys are interested in some of the aids I use, you can find them down there. Um, so this thing has a, a position where you place the ball in front of, has your stance width, and this kind of gets me back into the positioning of the ball again. 
And here's what's interesting about it is, I hit that really good. This is usually what tends to create bad timing, is, is your ball position starts looking weird. It gets back in your stance, it gets forward in your stance, and then you're, you start chasing the ball or, or changing your timing. So when you're trying to come back from a long layoff, the biggest thing, you, the best, most important thing you can do is just get the fundamental stuff back and then the timing comes back. That's, that's my point is timing comes back once these fundamentals get back and then it starts getting back in order because my, my swing will look just fine on video. And see those two shots I hit really good and most likely I was just you know fiddling with my ball position not getting it where I wanted. So this kind of gets me back to where the ball position feels good. Alright, I won't take you through a complete you know like hour warm up here but let's hit a few drivers because we want to get on the course and we need to get out there before uh, before some of the other groups tee off. So let me um, let me just get my ball position correct on my driver. That's right here on my alignment trainer. It's DVP, driver ball position. And this is an important one because you want to hit the driver good out there. It's pretty. And, and you know what's funny about when I warm up is I I'm not super concerned about targets. You've seen me talk about this in my channel. I'm much more concerned about lines. So if this is starting on my line and it's where I'm aimed, where I'm lined up with my, you know, with my body position, I don't hit it a target. I just make sure I'm hitting, hitting the ball on its line and then I can just go line up on the course. So to me, lines are very important. And that's probably as good as I can hit it. And I'll probably stop there because this, this, that building is straight downwind and I don't want to hit that building too many times. All right, so, hey, I'm ready. I'm ready to head to the course. Let's go over there and uh, play a few holes on the back nine. All right, so, you know, we started on number 10 today. This hole is teeth of the dog and it's because it's always straight into the teeth of the wind. The tee's kind of back today too. This will be a great starting hole. All right, so as you know, I'm going to try to get down the left side. Um, I line the ball up where I want it to go. I always make sure, and I want to the right side of the tee box as well. This gives me a favor to the left side. So let's get, let's get into this. I'm going to just try to hit this ball, nice trajectory, hit it solid, and just get it down that left side. It's all about just hitting the ball solid today, really. I'm actually maybe a little bit left, but I think it'll be all right. All right, this will be fun. It's, I mean, it's going to be super long today. That that ball, I mean, it's kind of like it's just tough to play when you haven't played in a while. Like I'm not swinging super hard. The uh, swing doesn't feel great, and you just have to basically just keep swinging. The biggest ch challenge for me is just stay in that moment and just keep trying to hit shots. Don't change anything just wait till it comes back and that's the biggest challenge for me is is you've got to make <laughs> you got to make decent scores when things are not quite feeling great so that's what we'll do we'll do that for a few holes and I'm sure as we warm up we'll get better it is cold um, and it's windy and 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 so look the other thing too is like this turf is just so matted down they they paint the turf out here so that you can define the fairways which is kind of cool but <laughs> it's just it's super matted down One thirty-eight, which not a bad drive considering uh, considering how not good I feel. Uh, all right, one thirty-eight. So one of the things that I, it challenges me if I haven't played in a while is I don't think well. I remember a couple years ago I was playing in a tournament and I hadn't played in a tournament forever. This is, it's been thirteen years, and I hadn't previously hadn't played in a tournament in like five years. So my brother goes, "Go play in this tournament." I'm like, "Okay." And it's not that I was hitting bad shots, it's I was thinking so badly. In other words, I wasn't calculating wind, I wasn't paying attention to left side, right side, or I wasn't paying attention to just hitting the right shot, like should I hit it low or high or whatever. And I was just hitting, I'd hit a shot and go, what was I thinking? So you gotta, you gotta get your head back on here. So I got 138, it's into about a 15 mile an hour wind, maybe a little stronger than that. 
Um, so let's call it 153. And then I want I can be behind the hole a little bit. So that's a seven iron. I'm gonna I'm gonna grab a seven iron real quick and just so you know 138, 138 is a nine iron, but you know, here we are into the wind. And by the way, I've changed my equipment. I got some new irons here, so we're gonna be kind of feeling out the yardages on these things as we go today. They're, they're pretty much spec'd out like my last set, so it shouldn't be too different. All right, well, let's just hit this little seven iron, and I'm gonna just choke down on it. I wanna get the flight down a little bit. Choking down, by the way, takes a little speed off the club so it doesn't lift it, the ball in the air. So I'm gonna choke down on the club just a little bit. All right, I think we got that. Just choke down right there and see if I can't fire it in there. Man, I hit it really good. Right there, right there, right there. It's really good. If that's the right club, it'll be close. It may be past a little bit. Um, I flighted it perfect. I, that to me, flight on that one, because the, it's so windy that the flight matters if you hit that thing in the air. So it may be past the hole a little bit, but I love the shot. It was, that was fun. I mean, it came in from here because the wind's coming this way and I played it. I pl this was my target right here. Yeah, you can see it landed just left of the hole. See the mess over on that side? So I was aiming here, the wind's coming from right there, and I flighted it right in here and let the wind kind of push it over. You know, I've talked about this before on my channel. I don't, I don't uh, shape the ball. I let the wind shape it. So it was aim it here straight and let the wind push it to the right. All right. All right. Catch a quick read on this. It's going to go that way. I'm going to go right to left. I'm going to walk below this one just a little bit because I want to feel how much slope is here. It's pretty good, and the wind's coming that way too. I'm going to give this one a little bit more than a little bit more than. And there you go. I think that's it right there. It kind of feels good. I just killed it. Absolutely killed it to the line. That's gonna, it's going to be fast today, man. That's one thing that I'm going to have to figure out is just the speed. That would have been fun to make that one. Start off with a, uh, a birdie on the one of the probably the most difficult holes we'll have today well until we get to 18 <laughs> but yeah but that's just i had i didn't hit any warm-up putts which you should by the way and had no idea on the speed so i hit my line just hit it way too far past the hole all right that was fun that was a great shot in there though i was pretty happy with that all right yeah my brother would be pretty upset right now with me he'd be like uh you just hit two great shots and missed a six foot putt because you didn't warm up your putting yeah i know sorry tim i uh i'll get better one day but yeah you should you should you should go hit some putts and just get the speed speed figured out because that's super fast and they're going to be fast today because they're hard it's windy it's winter uh very matted down okay let's uh this hole is pretty good here this is a par four probably four i don't know 440 um Wind is kind of down from left to right. Again, I want to favor left side, let the wind kick it down there into the fairway. You know, the biggest thing for me always is selecting the right side of the tee, the correct side of the tee, which on this hole is the right side of the tee, which favors getting it down the left side. Pay attention to tee, tee box, tee lines, and then line your golf ball up where you want it to go. Make sure that's good and then that's going to help you. And you know, I don't, a lot of people ask me, I don't necessarily pick out a target. I pick a line because I, I, the, my biggest thing is I'm going to flight it towards this area. Flight it, I, I can't pick a target on the ground. So I kind of pick out, there's my line on that side and that's going to get it down the fairway. So I've talked about this before. I can't visualize targets, I visualize lines. So I got my line, you can kind of see that kind of that cedar, that small cedar, that's kind of where the ball's lined up. That's, if I get it there and it, the wind will kick it down, 
a little bit to the right, so I like that right there. That's a perfect, perfect line right there. Well, yeah, I hit it right at the cedar. Man, that wind kicked it way over there. Yeah, that's gonna be in the bunker. But that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fight it out today. It's gonna take some of that. And on that swing, here's what, here's what I felt. Just so you can see where, where timing gets you on this. Back swing actually felt pretty solid, but then I felt like that. I felt a little bit in front of it. I think my foot maybe came up a little bit. And that's where hung the face open. That's exactly what it felt like. But that's, that's what I'll deal with when I haven't played a lot because I'm just, the sequence, the timing, you're just out of shape. I'm out of rhythm. And, and the only way to get rhythm back is play golf <laughs> and hit shots. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get some rhythm back. Well, we're gonna hit some creepy, creepy looking shots like that. Yeah, that's the way it goes. We'll see if we can make a great par with, uh, on a hard hole. This is, this is a good hole right here. And it's gonna be in this bunker um, which doesn't make it any easier. But let's see if we get a decent lie. Where are you? Right. Okay, so this will give me a little chance to kind of explain what I do when I hit it in a bunker. Um, let, me, let me get a quick yardage from where we're at. I, gotta, I think I can get this pretty close to the green. Let me see. Eh, 192, so <laughs> maybe. Um, and the reason I say maybe is because I got to get enough club on it to get it over that lip too. Um, so this is maybe just getting smart about it. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to hit a five iron. This will be a little risky. Um, what I, sometimes what I like to do is kind of get in here and feel it and see, see if I actually feel like I can get the five iron to do what I want it to do. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be risky hitting a five. Um, all right, I think I can do it. So five iron, try to advance it up there, get it up the hill, and then try to get it up and down. I don't think I can get it all the way there uh, with what's what's happening right here, but I got to get it enough down there to try to wedge it in there. So let's let's just see what I can do. Um, quick quick story here about how to get it out of these shots. The key is, is, is staying very stable with lower body. Um, so in other words, almost my feet are in cement and I'm making very much an arm swing. It doesn't mean I'm not using lower body, but I'm keeping my feet very still if I can. I don't want a lot of movement. Just trying to make solid contact. It's very much an arm feeling swing just to make solid contact. Okay, let's see what happens here. Just try to advance it and hit it solid. Man, I hit it good. Get up! Yeah, a little short, but hit it really good. I mean, I hit it solid. I knew I couldn't get it there, but I had to hit enough club. Had to hit enough club to get it over that lip. If you, you probably didn't see where it landed. It landed on the upslope onto the green, then it kind of trickled back down. It'd be a tough up and down, but that was, that's kind of what I expected. And one of the things that you have to do is pay attention to that lip because I see so many people slam it to the lip of the bunker and then they and then they hit it into a worse spot. I'll make the worst I'll make here is bogey. And so that's that's fine. You can get away with bogeys. Just don't want to make doubles. Um, first thing I checked was that lie because you can see look this is what's funny about this. Okay, so see the slope? That's where my ball hit up on that slope, right? So my ball hit right up there. I almost got onto the green. <laughs> look at all these divots down here. It's where everybody ends up because because they hit it up there, it doesn't quite, doesn't quite get on the green and everybody rolls down here. So the bad news is that you can get a really crappy lie. This thing's sitting kind of in a divot. <laughs> Not good. All right, um, let me go, I'm gonna take a walk. I wanna check, check the whole location real fast. Yeah, this is gonna be, it's gonna be something here. Let me, uh... I'm, I'm measuring. So, 25 yards basically to where I want to land it. A lot of guys will like putt this up the hill, which isn't a terrible idea. I'm going to try to hit a little wedge in there and see if I can't hit a little 
you know, 10 feet past the hole, I'm happy with that. This is, this is nothing easy, nothing easy about this. Yeah, I just caught it thin. It was sitting down in that crap right there. Oh boy, all right. Hey, I don't cut on my channel. You're gonna see shots like that. <laughs> it, uh, it just skanked it out of that little hole right there. All right, let's go two putt this and get out of here. This is uh, gonna be way past the hole. All right. So yeah, so I mean, I, you know, sometimes you just gotta take your punishment and like that, because a lot of guys will try to hit a putt and then they'll try to put it up the hill and it goes back down the hill and now they're stuck with the same shot again. So even though I didn't hit this great um, and it was a tough shot, it was still one of those things where at least I got a putt at it, right? Worst, worst I'm going to leave is bogey. So let me kind of read this here. I got it kind of going right to left. Wind's coming there and it's fast, man. These are, these are going to be super fast. So if I can get it, if I can get it on the right side of the hole, if I can keep it on the right side of the hole, it will come down to the left. Yeah, this is just speed putt. I'm going to give it some here. It's just a speed putt. All right. Good speed, good speed here. Man, that was a great speed. Super fast. They are super fast. All right. I gave it a little bit just because I thought it might go a little bit more than that. But, and one of the things is like, I drove it in the bunker, not a good drive. And walk away with bogey. Yeah, it's just what happens when you're playing. You gotta, you gotta basically just minimize the damages, take what you can get. I had a good bunker shot. I mean, I was happy with the shot coming out of the bunker because I hit it solid. Haven't hit one of those in a while. And so, yeah, just take what you can and we'll make a birdie out here. Okay, so we're gonna play this hole all the way back. This is, um, I wouldn't say it's, it's a hard hole. You gotta keep it on that right side. But this is as far, far back as they'll play it. Let's see, let me see what the yardage is here. 469, so yeah, good, good, good hole here. And once again, so this one, the wind, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking wind into consideration and then line, right? So the wind's coming this way, kicking it out from the right. I can, I can hang it out to the right a little bit, but I'm gonna go about mid tee box here. If I can get the right shape. So, if, so just for example, if I was here and I hit it out to the right, it's going into the wind just a little bit. Maybe not killing the ball too bad, but it could. When I come over here just a little bit, it rides the wind a little bit more and I can maybe use it. So I can maybe get a few extra yards out of the wind. So that's kind of why I'm in the middle of the tee box here. All right. I like that line. Favor the right side here because the wind's going to kick it and it's just the line to hit it on right there is that right side of the fairway. All right. I like that line using the ball. Here we go. Man, I killed that. That's awesome. It's playing long though. I hit that good. That's like a bullet right there. All right. This hole's playing long today. I mean, I'm. Well, we played it from the back tee, but but uh, this is a this is a great golf hole. All right. So let's see what we got left. All right. We got 171 to the flag. I'm gonna go to the front. So 160 or 62 to the front. Um, so 170, it's 170 winds coming from the right. I can kind of keep it on the right side. I kind of feel like a seven iron, but I'm not sure if that'll get all the way there. All right, let's hit the six iron. It's a little downwind. Wind's not really helping me on this. It's kind of, the wind's kind of hurting me from, oh, it's not hurting me, it's just coming from the right a little bit. So it's pushing it to the left. So, all right, let's hit the six iron. And uh, I'm, so if you look at the line, see the flag, I'm gonna go, I'm trying to go to the right side of the green there and the wind will knock it to the left. So that's my line. So you're seeing me aim a little to the right here. 
with a six iron. Okay, I think I got it. All right, so let's let's get the feel for that. Okay, here we go. I hit it exactly at it. A little long. I mean, it was right at it. I mean, it literally was covering the flag. Uh, man, it's a little long. Dang it. I knew the seven probably couldn't get there. Um, and then the six, I hit it really good, and the wind just, just pushed it. So it was a great shot. I mean, I loved it. And what's funny about that swing is that I actually started. So there's a, I have a feeling in my when I'm playing where I get super, super confident. It's usually because... It's usually because I, I call it locking myself out. You know, I've talked about this on my channel. Locking myself out means that, I, that I'm like, like I'm, I'm set, like I'm set and I'm ready to hit. And that set feeling, sometimes if I haven't played a lot, I don't get that feeling. But man, when I get that feeling, I'm like a machine. And right before I hit that, I was like, I felt it. You know, I felt that set. So I know I was gonna hit that one good. Um, I think you should work towards that feeling. What is, I call it locking out. Locking out is when I just feel like, boom, I'm just in that spot where I take it away perfectly every time. I practice for that. And you'll see me talk about that in my channel sometimes. Man, I hit, I hit this exactly perfect. And I was a little afraid. I was in between clubs a little bit. Um, I was a little afraid of, uh, well, let me see where this hit. See, look, it hit, so look where it hit. It hit only, you know, 10 feet past the hole, but you know, it's coming in right on the flag stick. Um, the seven iron would have landed, see, the seven iron would have landed probably just on the front, and then it could have, it would have been probably okay, but yeah, it's just like one of those in-betweeners, which makes it hard to make birdie sometimes when you hit good shots like that and they just don't have a chance to get close. I'm gonna leave the flag in on this. Um, but heck, I mean, I hit that so good. That was really good. All right, it is, it is windy today. It's, it's really windy. I mean, it's, it's making this whole experience one level harder. All right. All right, this one, interesting. It's gonna go that way. You can see the grain is kind of dark and then gets light super fast down the hill there. It goes right, then it goes left. I mean, it goes left, then it goes right. I'm gonna walk it just to, I like to kind of feel this because okay, definitely going left here and then definitely going that way. Well, let me see, going down there. I don't know, maybe it goes, it's hard to figure out here. It may be pretty level. All right, I'm gonna go, such a long putt. I mean, what is this? Probably 50 feet. I just want to lag it up there, lag it up there and see if I can't just get it close. All right, a little lag putt here. Just good speed. Going to the left. So that slowed down pretty fast because, and I felt it, I hit it okay the wind kind of kicked it and it started slowing it down. So it was actually right on line. I think it would have been pretty close, but the wind just stopped it. All right. So I saw it coming to the right down here. So it's definitely going to go a little bit to the right. All righty. Got the ball in the wrong spot. Let me fix that. All right. It's going to play pretty straight. All right, I like that. That first putt, just hard to figure out the speed on that first putt, just because it's, it's 50 feet, it's going up and then down and into the wind. So two putt, I'll take it every time. I don't like having four footers though. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna play, this is postage stamp, little par three, tricky par three. 
We're gonna go on this side because the tee's a little bit back today. Why do they have the tees back? It's not an easy day. They should have the tees up there. Um, but I'll, let's, I'll tell you about this hole though. I actually think this might be a little harder shot because it brings the left into play a little bit more. When you come over here, it doesn't make it that much longer. However, if you look at the angle here, it, it, well, it's no easy shot, but it just, it creates a little more angle to the right, so it doesn't really make it harder. It just changes one half a club length. Actually, 155, 155. I'm gonna hit, you know, so one of the things, and you know, I've talked about this before on my channel, this has almost the same exact angle as that, as that shot I hit just in there. You notice how I hit a six iron from 171. It flew about 175 and then went about 180. So my six iron went 175. I kinda, I kinda pay attention as I'm playing to the conditions, how they're affecting my yardages. And so if you think about that, well, so I was 100, and basically that was a seven iron. I should hit seven iron from 171. So one, this is an eight iron here from this distance. And I'm kind of like, eh, it's gonna be close. But knowing what I did back there, I think I'm pretty confident that the eight iron's gonna be, gonna be just fine. All right. I always tee the ball up on a par three just a little bit, just because you don't want to deal with the ground as much. So I always tell people, make sure you put it on a slight tee on a par three. Take some of the friction out of there. And okay, so that line of that golf ball is towards the right side of that green. So that's, and the wind I know is gonna move it that way a little bit. So that's a nice, favorable, safe line for this shot here. So, all right, I like that. A little eight iron here is nice and solid. Carry, baby, carry. <laughs> oh, wow. I hit it good. It's a good shot. It's a little tugged. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I'm hitting it pretty good. I mean, for, for my, my expectations are pretty low today. <laughs> um, but like that was right at it. The wind pushed it over there and it carried. We'll see what that one carried. I bet you it barely carried, but it was right at 157. Um, I wanted a little bit right of that to be safe because my heart's beating a little fast, but it's just a golf ball. Kind of look what happened here, and that's what, that's what makes, I think that's what makes this experience when you play in these conditions kind of hard sometimes, is that it's kind of like no matter where I land that golf ball, it's very hard to get it close to the hole, even though I have an eight iron in my hand. Look at my divot. I flew it exactly 157. If you look at where that divot is, it's exactly on this side of the hole. Now, this is a very, very safe yardage for me because I knew the eight iron would carry this far because I didn't want to put this into play. Like the club I chose was I took this out of play. I took everything up here out of play. So I knew the ball was going to carry this far, at least this far. And that, that makes it hard because the greens are firm. It's straight downwind. And so I fly it, you know, a perfect yardage and I have a you know, a 25 foot putt. Hard to make birdies when you can't, when your proximity to the hole is, is not getting within 10 feet. But think about it this way. If I would hit a nine iron, which I wouldn't have, but if I would have, that puts this, that's the right club for getting close to the hole. A nine iron right here, cause it's gonna hit here. It's gonna kick down to the hole. But look what it does if I, if I, did, if I tug it like I did that a little bit, it's in the water. If I miss hit it, it's in that crap and it makes a very hard shot. So what you're really doing is you're playing high, high percentage golf. And you know me, um, I always play very high percentage golf if I can, and then take the birdies when I can too, and just try to keep hitting good shots. So I just wanna let you know my thought process is there a little bit. And occasionally you'll make one of these, you know, and so that's a bonus. But I'm not gonna make really big numbers if I, miss it shot. So, all right. All right, this going to the right, because uh, big hill up there. It is uphill. It's straight up the hill. Straight up the hill into the wind. So we're not going to have quite a fast to putt on this one. So 
I'm not, it's not necessarily a speed putt, it's just to get it on the line and, and uh, I think it's just gonna go to the right when it gets up to the hole. All right, I like that right there. Left, left side, good speed. I didn't hit it, I didn't hit it, I didn't hit it, I didn't hit it. <laughs> oh. All right. It's kind of like, it, I, I decelled that a little, I decelled a little bit on that putt. I was, uh, you guys know Heath Slocum. Heath and I were out here practicing a couple weeks ago and Heath goes, buddy, you need to accelerate your putter. <laughs> That's like, that was his lesson to me. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Sometimes I decel. And that one I definitely did on that putt. Well, I hope you're enjoying this time on the course. It feels good to be back out here. Uh, a little recap. Missed a birdie putt on 10. I think that still kind of hurt me a little bit right here. Uh, so that was kind of a missed opportunity. Made a bogey on 11. Nah, eh, you know, that's, that's going to happen to you. It's windy. It's tough. Tough hole. Hit good shot on 12. Good shot on 13. So I'm actually pretty excited about the fact that I'm getting my rhythm back and hitting some good shots. So I enjoy being back here on the course. I hope you're enjoying it too. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon for notifications. And I'm going to play the next five holes. I'll see you in the next video.